Hey everyone, how are you? Good morning. This is Kaylana here, the blessed driver. And thank you for stopping by my channel. It's kind of early this morning and I actually started a little early because I had to get up and take care of some things. But this morning, initially I started off with DoorDash. Now my shift technically started at 10 a.m. They had a couple of blocks that were available so I just hopped on and I did a couple of deliveries this morning for DoorDash and then I hopped on Uber Eats and I did a couple of those as well. So I did pretty decent this morning. However, I wanted to talk with you about my follow-up with DoorDash and how things are going right now. I know I haven't really talked a whole lot about DoorDash but I just wanted to give you an insight on how I'm doing since the last time I kind of talked about it. Now Overall, I, I like DoorDash. I like the platform. Um, the pay is pretty decent. And what I like about DoorDash is, of course, almost like Grubhub, the customers can add the tip um, beforehand and you can kind of see how much you'll earn. And hopefully Uber Eats will do the same thing in the near future. So we'll see about that. I'm kind of satisfied with DoorDash, but there are some things about it that kind of rub me the wrong way, I think. And I'm going to start with the pros and cons to DoorDash. And these are my own personal opinions and also my own personal experiences. So what I feel and what I believe and what I think may not necessarily agree with how you feel or what you're experiencing, but these are just my personal opinions. And so first, let's start with the cons. <laughs> One of the things that I do not like about DoorDash is their rating system. But I kind of feel like I'm not sure if it's the customers because usually some of the customers that order from a particular food delivery app are usually sometimes the same ones that order from different ones. It's like me, personally, I order from different ones. Sometimes I use Uber Eats. Sometimes I use DoorDash. Other times I might use Grubhub from every now and then, um, maybe Beyond Menu, but I kind of mix it up. I noticed that the ratings are harder for DoorDash delivery drivers than it is for most apps. And for me, like I carry my DoorDash bag, you know, I have my insulated bag and I make sure that the food is in there. Everything is put together nicely. I'm dressed professional, at least how a delivery driver should dress. You know, I have on either black pants or slacks or have on jeans and a, a t-shirt or whatever. And I'm nice and courteous and, you know, and I'm cool with staff, but I'm not really sure why the ratings dip the way they do. It seems no matter how nice you are sometimes or how good of a delivery driver you are or how you follow by the rules, your rating still kind of fluctuates and sometimes it goes down for no reason. I know that sometimes it could be the restaurant maybe. Maybe they didn't put a certain item in a customer's food or they forgot something or whatever the case is and so it may reflect on you. DoorDash has been uh, notorious for deactivating people once their rating got so low and that's not fair and that is like a setup. That's kind of like how Instacart was when they would deactivate you for nothing. And a customer could lie. Unfortunately, I hate to say that, guys, but people don't tell the truth all the time. You may have been within maybe like a two-mile radius from the restaurant to the customer's home, and the food was still nice and hot, and everything was on time. You were nice. You were professional. And they may have given you like a three or a four or a two, like whatever. And so you're not really sure what happened. And also keep in mind that restaurants, they can rate you too. Restaurants will rate you if you brought in your, your, your hot or cold bag how nice you were. It's like, okay, so why am I getting rated so low? And I think, I don't, I don't know if that's like a mind game and you can email DoorDash and tell them what's going on and you might not see any change in your rating. When they do that, it's almost like a form of control. I know that there are a lot of dashers out there who do a phenomenal job, no matter how nice they are, no matter how professional they are, but they still might get a low rating. Not having a five, it's kind of hard sometimes. And then maybe one day you might have like a four point nine four or five star rating and then later on that day or the next day you look and you have like a 4.07 or 4.15 or whatever it's like the the rating system is rough you know i'm not really sure if maybe the doordash customers aren't just happy with the platform sometimes some of the customers that use the doordash platform are just hard to please and some people don't realize that from where you are <clears throat> Like as far as the restaurant to where a customer lives, it could be a long distance and this can go on any platform. Say like if you're picking up from point A and the customer's house is maybe maybe five or six miles away or seven miles away. And so it's going to take you some time to get there. And sometimes it could be traffic or it could be busy in the restaurant and you can 
let the customer know, hi, I'm here at the restaurant, just to let you know, it's going to be a little bit of a wait because they're still either cooking the food or it's a long line, whatever. And sometimes a customer might, might respond like, okay, cool, no problem. And you get there, you deliver the food. The food, to your knowledge, is still hot or still, at least still warm, but they still rate you bad. And some things are just beyond your control. And I feel like sometimes they count that against you and it's not really fair. I have to tell you guys a story. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll tell you that in a minute. Like, okay, you might get $6 for warm delivery, but then they have like certain like peak boosts. Like you might get like an extra $2 per delivery, extra $8, whatever. And sometimes I feel like, okay, they do that to get drivers in to deliver during a certain time. But when you really think about it, some of those peak boosts, it's just really what we should be get, getting paid anyway. That's just my opinion. Like if, if you normally get between like six and maybe eight or nine dollars per delivery, that's pretty decent. But the peak boosts are great, especially if it's busy or if they need drivers. But I kind of feel like that's what we should get paid anyway. Um, I kind of feel like they're not giving us all of our tips. Sometimes I, sometimes I look at the metrics and I look at some of the bonuses. I'm thinking something is missing here. Like that doesn't add up because I'm supposed to get paid this. So why am I getting paid this? DoorDash is going to be along the lines of another lawsuit. Kind of like how Instacart is at this point because they're not being totally truthful with some stuff. And I feel like there's a lot of things that are being hidden. I love the platform, but I think this rating system is so bogus and it's hard. So, but some of the positive aspects of DoorDash is the flexibility and Oh, so, oh, so, and also picking blocks. Some people may not have the ability to uh, pick a block at a particular time and then they miss out. So I know like if you don't get on the app a certain time of the day, and I know the time to get on to pick your blocks, but it's like, then you, then you might not be able to get anything for the rest of the day. But if you check the app regularly, you might be able to pick a couple blocks here and there. But for me, in my opinion, to really sustain yourself is to um, pick a block for like a certain amount of time and just stay on that block for a while. And I also like the fact that we can cash out instantly, even though the cash out fee is a little pricey, it's $1.99 per cash out. And you can only cash out once a day. It's overall, it's pretty decent. Um, the other day I got paid like the next, I think $7.50 per delivery, but I was up early. And so I realized that, man, people do order breakfast in the morning. Like it's sometimes it gets busy in the mornings and even like how we have Walmart deliveries. And that's also a downside these Walmart deliveries from, you might be delivering like a hundred items for six or $7. I know most drivers that I talk to, they don't pick up those orders because it's like not paying enough. And I think DoorDash needs to step it up. But there's some quirks that I feel like DoorDash needs to fix and to work on to really make it worth a lot of Dash's while. And they also have the, the policy where we have to wait on a customer once they get available. Um, so if you go to a customer's house and they're not home or they're not answering the phone or, you, or you're stuck outside the gate, you know, you have to do the wait time. You have to follow the, the procedures. I think they have up to five minutes or so to answer. And if they don't, then you try to reach them again and then you cancel the order. But then DoorDash will blow your phone up if the customer's like, oh my gosh, I missed a call. And five minutes later, they want you to go back and deliver the order, but that's too late. Or if you're doing like a Walmart delivery and... The customer may not be home or they might be asleep or whatever the case is, you can't reach them or you're outside the gate and DoorDash wants you to wait 20 minutes. So you want to wait 20 minutes for $7.50? That's if you decide to take the order. So yeah, those are kind of like quirks I don't like. Um, one of the weirdest situations that I had with DoorDash was uh, recently, this is like maybe a month ago, I went to deliver an order. I went to deliver to this apartment complex. Now this is a very familiar apartment complex. And sometimes it's hard to get in there because, you know, sometimes the box doesn't work or whatever. She ordered from uh, the Mellow Mushroom in Winter Park. As I looked at the address, I realized, okay, that's where she is. And so I was like, hi, are you in this complex? Oh, well, yeah, that's where I am. And so it took her a while to answer the, to, to respond back. Finally, she responded back and I asked her, what was there a gate code to get in? So I tried the codes, it didn't work. She goes, well, you just have to wait until someone comes in so you can follow them in. Nothing was working. I wasn't able to get in. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. It took so long. <laughs> LOL. I was naked. And she seemed like she was being silly on the phone. And so I was thinking, okay, maybe she just got out of the shower or whatever the case is. And I'm thinking to myself, if a customer is naked, can't you just put some clothes on? And I'm still outside the gate. Um, she's like, well, when you come to my, to my apartment, just leave it at the front door. Now, this was a hot pizza and something else. Now, I know at a customer's request, you can just drop stuff off and whatever. But for me, I don't leave certain foods outside. 
and I want them to verify with, with DoorDash to make sure it's okay. That's just me personally. And so she's like, oh, I'm sorry, but I'm naked right now. And, you know, I can't come to the door. And I was like, well, ma'am, I'm still, I'm still stuck outside. And she's like, well, you know, I'm a DoorDasher too. And I do DoorDash part time. And I think you should abide by the customer's request and do what they say. I said, okay. So by this time I had already pressed the customer not available button and I waited. And she's like, wait a minute, what the F? And what are you doing? Like I told you to this and that and this and that. I said, well, ma'am, I'm stuck outside. I can't get in. Well, can't you just follow somebody in? So some minutes have passed. I said, well, sorry, ma'am, your time is up. You might want to reach out to DoorDash to have them to resend your order. I apologize for any inconvenience. And she started sending me all these nasty text messages. I'm thinking to myself, wow, this is how a DoorDasher is. And so the order was canceled and she was still blowing up my phone. And some of the things she was saying, she was like, well, you know, um, you know, I, I spent my last few dollars and I'm very hungry. I need my food and talk about how, how, how naked she was. I ain't got time for that. And so by this point, I was over it. I ended my dash early and I went home. I went to bed and I was done. So yeah, that was my story. <laughs> I have more stuff to share with you about DoorDash and some other videos that I'll share later. But I got to run, guys. It's getting kind of later in the day. So I will talk with you later. Thank you for stopping by my channel. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and sign up for the newsletter below for my upcoming uh, YouTube channel. Peace out. Bye.